You'll often hear me say that your bow is the most important factor when it comes to creating your ideal Irish fiddle style, and I stand by that. Today I'm going to walk you through five steps to fix your bowing and therefore improve your lilt. There's more where this came from, so if you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so that you get notified every other Thursday when I post a new video. I came to Irish fiddling from outside of the tradition. I was classically trained and for years I sounded nothing near like the Kevin Burks, the Liz Carrolls, the Mairead Nesbits, nothing like that. I did not have any sort of authentic style that was true both to the tradition and to myself. But after attending workshops and getting really serious about my Irish fiddle style and my practicing, also spending a year in Cork City, Ireland, I made total progress and I was able to significantly up-level my style to a place where I'm really proud of where it's gotten to today. And I want the same for you, so let's get into the details. So step one is to check your tone. I have a four part framework for this. It is placement, parameters, weight, and speed, and I'm gonna walk you through that. play most tunes in the upper third of my bow, usually even just right about here. Sometimes I use more bow, but I can say consistently you're going to see me there, and when I'm not thinking about it, you'll probably see me hanging out in about lane four, maybe even lane five, so I'm more towards the fingerboard side of my fiddle. That's just my personal preference, so you might have a different place that you prefer to, but this is about where I would be. <laughs> Step two is all about wrist flexibility. So you'll notice that my hand is pretty much moving like this when I'm bowing. And maybe you think, okay, my wrist doesn't do that. Well, it might not, but you might have a different bow hold than I do. So if you're holding the bow with your classical hold right about here, you're gonna want that flexibility to be more in your fingers, but you still wanna feel more speed just from your elbow to your forearm and you'll have a little bit of wrist movement there, but it's mostly gonna be felt in the fingers. Now, I hold my bow a little higher, so it's about right here. Have the pinky up, it's a little fancy. And so you'll see a lot more of my hand and my wrist doing the movement instead of necessarily my fingers doing the whole up and down motion. So that's the big thing that you wanna make sure that you have with the wrist flexibility, because that will give you the speed. And you need that speed not only for playing fast tunes, but also for creating the nuances. So there's a lot of like quick little things you can throw in there, like ornamentation. And you're going to want that flexibility in your wrist to be able to do those quickly to execute them fast so your audience is kind of thinking, oh wow, what was that? You know, it's already passed, but they did something really cool. You need that uh, wrist flexibility. That's one of the most important things after your tone. After you've got your tone and your wrist flexibility down, step three is all about phrasing. This is where you can think about the tune in little, um, little conversation chunks, really. So you could break it down into roughly two bar phrases. I talk about this a lot. Um, but if you break the tune down into two bar phrases and you've got an eight bar A part, then you've got a conversation of two lines between two people. So let's just say that you're playing Made Behind the Bar. <laughs> There's your first little line. That's your response. We're back to person A again. If this were a rhyme scheme, it would be A, B, A, C. And that's really what you think about with phrasing initially. Then you can kind of get into like accents and emphasis. So you would emphasize different parts of the tune based on your preferred style. So you could either use this with actually physically accenting the bow, or you can strategically put in different slurs or separate notes. And you can also maybe elongate a note or make it a little shorter. There's so many ways to talk about emphasis. I've actually done a few videos on emphasis on jigs and reels. You can see the jigs one up above in the card here, and that will give you a little bit more information, more specifics. But essentially, this is what you're focusing on in step three. 
And if this is going really fast for you, don't worry. I cover this entire process in way more depth in my online course, Find Your Lilt. And if you are watching this video in October of 2021, it's actually open for enrollment for another week. So you can get into the program and you can dig into all these topics into way more depth. Regardless of when you're watching this video, there is more information about the program in the link below this video, so you can check that out and read all about it. And if you're checking it out during an enrollment period, you're welcome to sign up and join us in the course. All right, step four is rhythm, and this is a big one. This is where you get to put everything you've learned into like really solid practice. So the best way to go about fixing rhythm and working on it is to get yourself into a groove, like really, really get repetitive with it. So this could look like playing uh, a little play along rhythm. <laughs> to just hang on a specific note or a specific phrase for a while. The point is that you're trying to isolate down to just the rhythm. You're not worried about the notes, you're not worried about intonation or about anything else except just the rhythm. So you're really going to want to isolate that and contain it into this little section where you could just focus on creating this steady rhythm. It's just a nice little groove. You can kind of get yourself into a trance that way. If you play for too long, you're just kind of in this whole other world of just this constant steady underlying rhythm. So that's the most important thing when you're looking to develop rhythm. And it's also probably the biggest factor with your bow. And lastly, step five, we're going to add the sparkle. This is your ornamentation. This is your variation. It's your personal expression coming to a full circle as you add all of the elements back into your playing. So that will sound a bit like just playing around with the different ornaments, playing around with the different variation you can do with a tune. It's an ongoing process, so if you are constantly on step five, that's actually a good thing. So it's just the last step to pulling all the other four steps together. <laughs> to know is which of these steps are you on? Let me know in the comments if you are on one, two, three, four, or five. That is bow tone, that is wrist flexibility, phrasing, rhythm, and then we'll just call it sparkle for step five. I've done a lot of other videos around each of these steps, but just to get you started, go ahead and watch this one next. It is how to get better Irish fiddle bowing strategy. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your dedication to improving your Irish fiddle skills, and I will see you next time.